we've uh, selected Place Dynamics LLC out of uh, Wisconsin to do the tourism study for us. And they have they are wrapping up their work. In fact, that contract uh, we're a week away from the end of the contract, and um, we thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, let you hear. There was a meeting held, some meetings held earlier in our region with the results of some of this, but we thought this would be a good wrap up today. And Jessica Keaton, our economic development coordinator, has been a, a leader in this project. Um, and I am going to give her a few moments just to say a few words. Um, she's probably probably can speak about tourism better than myself. And then uh, she'll turn it back to me and I'll hand it over to uh, Place Dynamics. So Jessica, um, floor is yours. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Just wanna to start by saying thank you so much. We couldn't have done this plan without you and your input and participation. It's been invaluable through the process. Um, I really got involved in tourism uh, during uh, GOA, had a tourism meeting at Lake Hope Lodge, and we got to talking to a few of our partners. Uh, Gina Collinsworth was involved with that, and Gina has done a great job, and we couldn't have done this without her either, so I want to recognize her. She has been a force, and as our public relations coordinator, I think that's a super important skill set to have when you're talking tourism. My hobby is traveling. And I've gone all over the United States. <laughs> and and I, I like uh, ecotourism. And I've been many places and I thought, gee, well, we've got these same sort of assets here in OVRDC. So it's been really exciting to work with Michael and his team to bring out what those assets are and how we might be able to uh, form cohesive strategies throughout our entire region uh, to put those into place and really market ourselves as a really great destination for anyone to come visit for a day, a weekend, or an entire week or longer. Um, and with the announcement of the uh, House Bill 377 that the governor will be signing soon and that $500 million, two areas that have been identified there are trail building and downtown revitalization. So I am super excited about this plan. I think it dovetails really well with that. So I won't keep you from those results any longer. I'll turn it over to Michael. Again, thank you all for joining us. And thank you, Michael, for all your work in the, OVR, in the OVRDC region. Thank you. What we did, uh, I, I guess I, I should say a, a little bit about uh, our approach. We believe in, um, in data. Uh, we, we research, we interview, we uh, collect information and try to come up with uh, strategies that respond to uh, the specific issues that we identify, whether it's an opportunity or a challenge. The other thing is, is that in developing this plan, we came up with a kind of organizational concept of, of calling this Ohio's wilderness. And it's not necessarily a brand that uh, you may continue to use. Uh, I think it is a, a fitting one based on what we heard from our discussions with people we met at the various uh, uh, attractions in the area, uh, you stop and chat with folks and, and try and understand why they're coming. And uh, also it, it ties into what a number of the county and local tourism organizations are already promoting that idea of um, uh, natural beauty, natural areas, uh, outdoor recreation, discovery, adventure, that all seems to tie in pretty closely with Ohio's wilderness. And then we identified um, within that um, seven areas or uh, groupings of, of um, attractions or issues. And then also uh, the broader framework of what do you have for visitor services and amenities? Uh, how easy is it to get around? What's the transportation situation like? What kind of infrastructure do you have to support tourism? How does the landscape reinforce that? And, and that's pictured in that little uh, um, graphic that you see here. 
Um, our approach, first of all, we want to look at that national trends issue because uh, at the start of this project, we were in um, in COVID. And what did that mean for tourism? Uh, what we saw is that uh, since people did not have access to some of the traditional places they might not they might be going, uh, you know, amusement parks were closed, uh, museums, other indoor venues were closed, um, that they were looking to the outdoors. And that was a benefit for this region. And we saw that reflected in some of the numbers that we uh, were able to pull. Um, but as the, uh, and of course you do have some of those indoor attractions that did suffer. Um, you know, for instance, the Southern Ohio Museum or the Adena, I uh, mentioned places that were closed and did not have the traffic. But um, just as we were wrapping up this uh, project, uh, another issue that came up that I think is equally significant, and that is um, inflation and gas prices. And I don't think we have seen the impact yet on tourism. We're starting to hear some rumblings out there. Uh, at this point, if somebody was planning a vacation and requested the time off and was going to be traveling out to Yellowstone or wherever it may be, uh, that trip was still on well, until Yellowstone closed. Uh, but um, I, I think as we move further into the year, people are going to be looking a little closer to home. It's, it's a little more expensive to travel further. And so you're going to see and both by air uh, that has been a COVID-related uh, uh, impact that air travel costs have gone up a lot, uh, as well as rental cars. If you've tried to get a rental car lately, um, if you're lucky enough to get one, you're paying three, four times what you used to pay for it. And then um, uh, gas prices. So people are looking closer to home. And I think in both of those cases, uh, those national trends are, for the most part, helping uh, the Southern Ohio region. Um, our process looked at uh, assessment through a number of different ways. I mentioned we did those, those interviews. We, we made three site visits while we were out, uh, each visit lasting several days up to uh, the first one, I think was uh, eight days that we spent in the area and visiting each of the counties, visiting as many of the communities as we could, visiting as many of the uh, tourism attractions as we could. Um, the subsequent visits, uh, we were able to fill in some of the places that had been closed during the first visit. And then um, uh, while we were out there, of course, we were looking at those uh, attractions and at the infrastructure that you have and doing an assessment. We kind of look at a few different dimensions of that, uh, but both the physical aspects of it and the um, uh, marketing and other things uh, that go into each of those sites and then a very large piece of what we did is using uh, mobile device tracking. And this is a fairly new technology. Uh, we're able to, uh, with using a vendor who, who aggregates this information, um, they're looking at about 30 million devices. And uh, from that sample, they're able to extrapolate and tell us a lot of information about who is visiting and the patterns of visitation. Um, Taking all that information, we, we then started processing it, looking at different, uh, looking at it in different ways and coming up with some of the opportunities and needs that we brought back uh, in our second visit, met with, with people uh, from various tourism organizations. I'm sure some of you were, were part of that meeting, uh, presented it and asked for feedback. Uh, then moving into the final piece of, of developing the strategies. Um, the assessment looked at organization, how is the, uh, the region organized at a regional level, county level, sub-regionally, who is doing tourism promotion? And I think one of the challenge we, challenges we see is that there is really no regional organization. And what you see at the county level or at the local level uh, is, is varying in terms of its um, capacity. So a place like uh, Claremont County, for instance, has the resources to do uh, some very good uh, tourism marketing across 
different platforms, whereas in other places you might see a chamber of commerce playing that role. Uh, and with those uh, with limited resources stretched across a number of different functions, tourism is, is often not a priority and is not at the same level as it is in some other places. And then there are communities and even counties where uh, very little tourism uh, effort is being is being made, even though that is an opportunity for some uh, economic development. Um, marketing was a, a key piece of what we looked at. Uh, currently, there is a little bit of branding. Uh, it doesn't really look like anybody has done uh, a professional branding uh, campaign, uh, but rather come up with things at a local level. And again, we, we saw the variation in quality. Although, again, there was that consistency, the, the emphasis on outdoor recreation, discovery and adventure. Uh, um, most places are doing uh, primarily printed materials. So there's a, a brochure and maybe some other printed materials that are being put together. This is often made available as a PDF on the website. Uh, not the easiest way to use that information, um, uh, particularly if you're on a handheld device. And uh, there is um, a little bit of use of social media. Several uh, organizations do have a Facebook page, maybe uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, a couple other accounts, those are not for the most part being well utilized and there is really no uh, marketing going on through that, no advertising. Uh, I just got back, as I said, from California and, and as soon as I hit um, wine country, all of a sudden my social media feeds were filled with ads for uh, wineries or visit Oregon wine country and, and other things based on knowing my interests in uh, uh, from my social media posts, as well as where I was geographically, you can do quite a bit of um, uh, pinpointing of your market when you're using social media. And so if you want to find somebody who uh, visits wineries and um, is traveling to through Oregon, well, you can target them for marketing. Uh, there is a little bit of advertising done uh, in other publications. So we did see a couple counties, for instance, using um, online travel magazines uh, uh, and getting content placed in those magazines, as well as advertising in some of the state or uh, other uh, uh, publications. And then uh, beyond that, some uh, some odd pieces here and there. Uh, one of the things I do like, I, I am seeing there is a little bit of a more uh, effort being in, put into things like trail guides in a couple different counties, uh, whether it's water trails or hiking trails. I think that information needs to get out, but it's not being uh, put out to activity specific kinds of marketing. Uh, so whether it's applications or websites that, um, uh, I'll mention all trails or the hiking project for hiking. There's a uh, fat tire for mountain biking. Um, there's a, uh, if you have it right on my desk here, I found this one, um, American Heritage for Tourism and Antiquing. Um, those kinds of resources are not being utilized. Um, infrastructure, the visitor information capacity, uh, there are some, uh, most, most counties do have a visitor information center. There are some uh, that are chamber organizations. And um, issues that we see there is uh, after hours or weekend hours uh, that are lacking. Um, the other thing that we note is that there are quite a few rest areas, places alongside the highways where you could have information distribution uh, and it's not being utilized very well. Uh, actually, I think it was uh, Adams County that has done a phenomenal job of getting kiosks out uh, in various places, um, even at some uh, private businesses, but at um, Serpent Mound, uh, there's a, a board and that might be Brown County. Um, I, I don't recall offhand. Uh, wayfinding is another issue. And one particular example of that is when I tried to find Buckeye Furnace 
there's no signage for Buckeye Furnace off of the highway. It's only after you get onto the county roads that you start seeing signage for it. Uh, lodging and camping, I think the lodging situation uh, is, is overall pretty good. There may be an opportunity for some additional lodging development, uh, as well as some unique kinds of venues. Uh, people are into things now like glamping and uh, uh, particularly the, uh, the short-term rentals, uh, especially if the property has some unique features. Camping is one we found that there is some, um, some issues. The state campgrounds, federal uh, forest campgrounds are pretty much as you would expect for their level of development, whereas private campgrounds really come up somewhat short, uh, particularly for people who travel on RVs and with COVID, RV sales went through the roof. Good question what's going to happen in the future with gas prices. As I said, maybe we'll see people take uh, more short vacations instead of driving off to a, a distant state. Maybe they'll only drive an hour or two to uh, uh, Southern Ohio and, and camp in the Shawnee uh, forest. Um, but things that are missing there, the, the level of development at the campsite uh, and also uh, particularly Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi is essential now, especially with people working remotely and expecting to be connected. And I know from my experience, I could not find a campground in the region that had reliable uh, Wi-Fi internet. Uh, even many also had difficulties with uh, cell phone coverage, and uh, that is the backup for a lot of travelers. And that was also lacking in this issue uh, in a number of places. Dining and shopping. Uh, you have some very good assets in both those cases. The Amish and Mennonite shops are very uh, popular with the tourists. And uh, there are a number of very good dining opportunities, whether it's uh, very casual. And I, I, I just love the idea of the dairy bars. I think that would be a, a wonderful promotion, a summertime promotion of, you know, part of your visit to the region has to be going to a dairy bar. And, uh, and getting an ice cream or, or getting a hot dog or whatever it may be. Um, there is an issue with hours and this is not uncommon. I, I don't wanna present it as something unique to you guys. It is certainly a problem in, in most places we go <coughs> where uh, businesses wanna keep a nine to five Monday through Friday or the restaurants uh, Tuesday through Saturday. And um, particularly when the Amish and Mennonite shops are closed on Sunday, it's a wonderful opportunity for those businesses that are open. And yet they instead look at that and say, well, as long as they're closed, we're going to be closed too. And those are the days when you really can rack up your sales. So if there's an issue with, with trying to capture tourist uh, spending if, if the businesses are not open. Um, is it, now we did look at a lot of attractions, we, we ended up running data on 80 sites uh, throughout the, the 12 counties and we included Hocking Hills there as a reference. Uh, we visited probably twice as many and some of the sites we, uh, we chose not to collect information uh, because we had, excuse me, we had a relatively good sample already of, of that type of attraction or maybe we could not collect the data. If you don't have cell coverage, we can't get uh, cell phone tracking data. Uh, so this, this is a map of, of the locations that we did uh, look at, and um, most of these are ones that we did collect data for. The kind of information that we have, uh, so we, we did provide all this, by the way, online. Uh, so if uh, anybody wanted to, they could go to a, a site that we set up and uh, access that information uh, for each of these sites as, as much as uh, of the information as we were able to get. It may just be for all visitors. In some cases, we did all visitors and tourists. We defined a tourist as somebody who was coming from a distance of over 50 miles. And uh, the kind of information that's in here are, first of all, the visitor origins, uh, which on the map here would be those, those green dots. I think this is for Moonville Tunnel, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, the travel route, so that's uh, marked in red and shows the routes that people are using to get 
to that uh, destination. And that is mapped. Uh, we have total counts of visitors and total counts of tourists. And uh, it's broken out for four years for uh, uh, 2018 through uh, 2021. And also broken out by time. So we can tell you uh, uh, by month, uh, by day, by time of day, by day of week, uh, all that information is, is included and gives you a pretty good idea of when people are visiting, uh, both seasonally and through the day and how many maybe are staying overnight. Uh, what is the length of, of time they're staying, the, the duration? Uh, what is the, the percentage of uh, people traveling by a uh, given uh, distance? Uh, what are the places they have in common? So if, if somebody is visiting Moonville Tunnel, um, what other places do they have, have in common? Uh, do 30% uh, of the people visiting Moonville Tunnel go to Hawking Hills? That kind of, of reference information. So we can start thinking about some linkages. And if you're trying to put together itineraries, what may be a, a good match uh, for people who are visiting this particular site? Uh, we also know exactly where they came from. Uh, so where were they before visiting the attraction and where did they go after visiting the attraction? And it's interesting to see some of the restaurants and hotels that, that crop up in that. Um, this uh, image here breaks out the, uh, uh, on the, on the left hand side, the uh, percentage of tourists, again, percentage of people who are coming from more than than 50 miles. And across the bottom in a log scale <laughs> is uh, the, the total number of visitors. So what we really would like to see is, is far more of people in that upper right hand quadrant, uh, more tourists uh, and uh, yeah, basically more tourists. Uh, so Hocking Hills uh, certainly is at the top of that. And you can see where some of the others uh, fall in. What well, the ones we uh, shaded uh, are the sites that, based on our experience, we would think have the greatest potential uh, to attract more tourists. And this gives you an idea. Uh, the red dots here are visitor origins of people who uh, visited Hocking Hills. And green are the aggregate uh, people who visited the attractions within uh, the 12 counties. And I did take the 12 counties out, otherwise it would have uh, been a pretty solid green blob in there. Uh, but um, we think Hocking Hills is ripe for the picking. And the kind of phrase that went through the back of our minds the, the whole time we're out there is, is uh, this area is, is Hocking Hills without the crowds. You know, still plenty of outdoors, a lot of uh, very large outdoor tracks, recreational tracks, natural areas uh, that um, uh, you can go to and, and you're not going to encounter people. Um, I, I did the hike around uh, Lake Vesuvius and I ran into, uh, I think, two other hikers uh, while I was out there. Uh, when I visited Hocking Hills, there was never a point where I didn't see other people. Uh, so uh, the solitude that people want is something they can find in this region. Who are these people? Uh, so taking that information about visitor origins, we're able to bring it into some other software and uh, pull demographic information. So we can tell you a little bit about who they are. I have to move this so I can read it. Um, oops. Well, I guess I have to not read it, but uh, uh, you can see the population there, the uh, median age, so younger folks who are visiting more diverse uh, visitors and also uh, higher levels of income. Uh, we have a lot more detail. We, we have what's called psychographic uh, profiles, the market segmentation. So the, the software that we use compiles different demographic and and uh, survey information and groups people by common interests. And we can tell you what those groups are and what their particular media habits are or what their uh, 
their interests are. And on the left there is, is an example when we look at some of the things uh, that people may participate in uh, on the left. The plus is uh, more likely, uh, more than average. Uh, so it, it, think of this as an index. If, um, if equals is 100%, a plus is somebody who's got a greater propensity to engage in that activity and a minus is somebody less uh, engaged in that activity. Uh, so um, some of the differences, if you look through here, the backpacking, bird watching, canoeing, ice skating, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not a very good one for this region, uh, but horseback riding, um, those kinds of uh, attending a county fair, those are the kinds of things that people who are coming to your region uh, have a greater propensity to engage in. And it really does tie to the resources that you have in the area. Um, and there are differences between people who live in the area versus people who are visiting uh, from outside the region. So highlights of the, of the research. This is an opportune time, as I, I said, between uh, COVID and now gas prices, uh, both encouraging people to, uh, to stay closer to home and to visit outdoor attractions. Uh, that cost less. And uh, you have the nearby metropolitan areas, and, and we see this in, in all the sites as well as aggregate, that the big areas that you're drawing your population from are Cincinnati, Dayton, uh, Columbus, um, and even sometimes a little bit further into uh, the northern part of the state. You're not pulling as well to the south, and I guess that would be somewhat to be expected because there are a great number of, uh, of outdoor sites to yourself that are probably keeping people there. Um, nature is the most significant draw, but we think there are some others. The, the Native American sites are not very well developed uh, and not, not very well visited at present, but have, I think, great potential because we do see people are willing to travel further for them. Uh, history, uh, the, the different attractions that you've got, whether that might be um, uh, the racetracks or the um, uh, Tecumseh drama or uh, Dog uh, Wood Pass, uh, you, you have a lot of uh, attractions there that are bringing in a significant number of people. Places, so uh, the downtown districts, uh, one would, we thought there's, there's so much potential and my first visit to uh, uh, to your region was back in 1996 uh, when I attended a conference in Cincinnati and, and took a day to drive up the river. And I remember getting to Ripley and thinking, what a great town. This has so much potential. Uh, unfortunately, I'd look at it 25 years later and say it's still where it was 25 years ago. Uh, the Amish and Mennonite, again, huge, uh, huge draw for those uh, shops. We do see that need for a regional approach. Um, if you think about where people are visiting, they don't think of it as I'm visiting Waukesha County or I'm visiting Dame County. They're thinking I'm visiting Madison, I'm visiting Southern Ohio, or I'm visiting the Appalachian area of Ohio, or I'm visiting the uh, Ohio River. They're, they're thinking in terms of region and marketing that's going on now is in terms of county and there's a mismatch. If you ask people, where is Brown County? Most people in Ohio are not going to understand that. If you say, um, where is uh, the Shawnee Forest? People go, oh yeah, I know where that is. Um, we do see a number of needs in relation to both the, uh, the assets and infrastructure uh, improvements that would leverage the tourism that you've already got, bring in more visitors. And uh, particularly we see opportunities for business development. And, and that's a recurring theme in here is, is we really want to be able to take those tourists who are coming to the area and convert that into spending. Uh, so that the area sees some economic benefit. Um, 
So the strategy has, has three main components, destination development, tourism marketing, and organizing for regional tourism. And you have that handout that went out this morning uh, that lists the specific uh, recommendations in there, and there's 47 of them. Of them. Under destination development, uh, we have visitor services and a sense of place. And uh, this is, again, providing the resources so that people can identify what they might want to see in the area, can navigate it. And sense of place, I think, is a very important one because you have a unique landscape that uh, is something that's memorable, that will automatically register with people if you can leverage it. And that, that's compiled of things like the, um, uh, the tobacco barns and the covered bridges and even the landscape uh, the natural areas and views and other things that uh, are distinctive to the place. And we'd like to see that recognized and importantly preserved. And one of the observations we had, for instance, is, is those tobacco barns are not going to be around very much longer unless there's an initiative to preserve them. Um, and there are a couple opportunities that we saw that uh, they can be very directly leveraged. There's there's one that is uh, situated right next to the parking area of a uh, commercial building that's now vacant. And just thinking a little bit strategically, if that barn could be enhanced so that it, it's a stop, you're driving along uh, the Ohio River Scenic Byway and there's your photo op. Uh, we, we did... <laughs> Andrew, uh, my associate, had a, a great term. He, he called them Instagram moments. Uh, those, those opportunities where you're going to snap a picture and put it up on social media. would love to see that encouraged because that kind of word of mouth marketing is precious. Uh, it, it is far more effective than any advertisement you're going to take out. Um, so natural areas, outdoor recreation, and we talk about uh, particularly trail development and uh, uh, not just the hiking trails, but horse trails and mountain biking trails and road biking trails. Uh, it would be great again to see a, uh, a rail, or not a rail trail, but a, um, a bicycle trail paralleling the Ohio River Scenic Byway. There's, there's uh, some of that being done along the, the Mississippi River Scenic Byway, um, or I forget what the uh, title is for that, but um, but uh, you see it used quite a bit, and there are towns that have really tried to brand themselves as as the biking destination on the Mississippi River because of that. I think you can replicate that here on the Ohio. Uh, the um, uh, water trails are another big one. You've you've got at least four different rivers. Uh, along with the Ohio River that people can canoe, kayak, boat, and, um, and then you have the lakes and reservoirs that, that people could also use for boating. Uh, the diverse visitor attractions, and, and some of them will be a draw in themselves. Some of them can be packaged along with other things so that if you're coming to uh, visit, uh, a great one is the, the Tecumseh drama that we thought if, if you're coming to see the Native American uh, assets in the region, that the, um, the Southern Ohio Museum with its collection there and the Tecumseh drama and the uh, several of the Hopewell sites could be part of a regional tour. So you're, you're visiting a number of things that some of them are more interactive. Uh, the Native American history, well, that is one that has a lot of potential. When we're looking at some of the uh, comparable sites, whether it's Cahokia or Ostlan or uh, a couple sites I'm familiar with uh, in some of the Western states, they have uh, done some, some restorations. So they have, for instance, uh, in, in, um, uh, in Fort Abraham Lincoln, uh, where the, the Mandan camp uh, was they have recreations of the lodgings and uh, a little encampment there and other things that have a more tactile experience. You get that to some extent with Serpent Mound, but it's, it's a bit missing in the other sites when you're looking over a field with the mounds there, you, you don't necessarily get a very good 
uh, feel for the site. Uh, so we'd like to see some of that enhancement done. Uh, another big recommendation in this area was a museum worthy of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, and whether that's a single museum or maybe it could be a multi-site museum, uh, just to amp up the, the, uh, the resources that are there. American history and a couple counties are, are really getting into this now, particularly uh, along the river. And that history is the history of settlement. It's the history of mining and industry. It's the history of the river itself as a transportation corridor during the settlement area era and beyond. It's uh, US grant, it's the civil war, it's the underground railroad, it's African-American history. All those are, are themes that can be weaved into the experience of the place. And I don't think any of them are, um, well, for the most part, they're not things that are going to draw a lot of people in, of the, in and of themselves, but combined with other things, creates a more rich experience. Uh, the destination downtowns and shopping here, uh, really the recommendations do center on uh, I'm restoring vitality to some of the downtowns of where it's lacking right now. Agricultural tourism, uh, we were talking before the meeting started, I'm, I'm doing an ag tourism project in Northern California and just got back yesterday from uh, being out there doing the same kind of assessment did uh, in Ohio. And you guys have so much more. Uh, I, I think it's something that is starting to be recognized. I, I, was talking about how in, in the literature, going back to you know, some of the stuff we pulled uh, when we first visited, might have been printed in about 2019, 18 maybe, uh, and versus the brand new brochures that came out not long ago, where now we're seeing a little bit more discussion about food and agricultural tourism. Uh, but that is a huge opportunity for you. Um, and it's everything from the um, uh, the farm markets and the Amish markets to uh, uh, the you pick berry patches and corn mazes and you have a number of uh, Halloween themed activities that are farm based uh, farm stays wedding venues. And that leads us into event venues, uh, another one that is is missed and um, both agricultural and event venues it's important to say that the private businesses are not marketing very effectively. Uh, that is one of the recommendations we have is, is working with those organizations to get them more effectively marketed. The event venues, uh, most of them will be pursuing a market for uh, weddings and family events, but there is a huge opportunity for business events during the weekdays. And I know of a couple that are starting to look at that as a, uh, uh, as a market, which would be really just wonderful because it's a missed opportunity. Uh, tourism marketing, we, we have many recommendations in there and, and uh, some of them overlap with what's in the destination development. Um, it seemed to make more sense to put them in destination development rather than pull them into marketing. But the focus of marketing really, I want to say, is on encouraging people to start thinking regionally. There are some good examples of that uh, from around the country. One right here in Wisconsin uh, that has been going on for over 30 years is uh, Wisconsin's driftless area. The, the corner of the state that was never covered by the glaciers, it's very hilly, it's very similar to, uh, to your area geographically. Um, also with a lot of very small communities, very few large ones. And uh, for more than three decades, they have been branding as a region. Uh, because it makes more sense than saying, oh, visit Grant County or visit uh, Lafayette County. Uh, it's visit the Driftless area. And, and they too focus on many of the same things, outdoor recreation, history, um, unique places to go visit. And then uh, organizing for regional tourism. And that's uh, just a number of recommendations we had in trying to create a, uh, a framework for regional cooperation. And we're suggesting um, somewhat of a, what we're calling coordinating councils, one that might be for the entire 12 county region. Uh, and then within that, we also think there are subregions uh, that could be marketed. And so you might find a case where um, 
three or four or five counties are marketing a particular area based on similarity of kinds of uh, attractions it has within it. And you can even see those counties maybe participating in uh, two or three different regions, uh, depending on, on the resources that they have. Uh, the sheet, as I said, uh, as well as the document itself lists all 47. I wasn't going to take the time to go through each of the 47 recommendations. It would uh, give you a very, very long presentation here, uh, and I think somewhat a dry one. Um, but with that, um, I would ask if you guys have any questions for us. Michael, we do have a couple questions in our chat box if we want to start there. But okay. if anybody want, has a, additional questions, you know, you can mm -hmm. unmute and ask them. But uh, let's see, Lori Knuckles is asking, how would you suggest development of tourism in Ripley and its underground railroad sites? And that's near that fantastic, um, you know, underground railroad museum and site of John Rankin House. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Rankin House and the Parker House, and then you have even, uh, you know, the uh, stories I came across of uh, climbing up the bluff and uh, the crossing of the river, and you have the, the National Museum in Cincinnati, and one of the things about history, history, so much of it is, is tied to the Ohio River Corridor that uh, we almost thought that the Ohio River Scenic Byway is, in a sense, the, the thing that connects them. And you might have topics that uh, are relevant across the entire corridor. And in other areas, you're going to specialize a little bit. But um, the Underground Railroad is one of the most compelling stories that you have uh, historically. And it is something that I think you can develop that uh, that byway so that people who, and it's great for bus tours, by the way, uh, or school tours, that uh, a visit to the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati is followed by a drive out uh, along the river and, and maybe Ripley is the destination in this case. Um, I think Ripley has, of, of, of all the communities, it's, it's probably in the top five with its potential to develop that destination downtown uh, where you have the concentration of unique and very good uh, uh, shopping and dining. And it is one that I think um, the antiques art, uh, one of the things that was missing through this whole area was, was art galleries. And I know there's a lot of artists in the area, but it didn't seem like there were very many places where you could get their work. Um, a, a place to uh, take um, local foods. So uh, restaurants or uh, shops that may sell local foods. There is some business development that needs to occur and the businesses themselves are somewhat the issue there because uh, I stopped in and I, I talked to uh, three or four of the businesses that were open. And one of the things I noticed with the businesses that were closed is most of them said that they would be open at 10 o'clock on Saturday. And I was there from 10 to noon and that business was still closed the whole time. Uh, and that was more than one. Um, and Ripley, I, I don't want to single it out uh, because it is something we saw across the whole area and very much something we see in most of the communities we work with. Michael, I'm the village administrator in Ripley and I can sort of lend some issue, lend some information here if you're, if you're willing to listen for a couple of minutes. I don't sure. want to take too much time, but um, the positives that we have going on, first of all, is I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, I'm sure everybody else on the call is, especially the OBRDC folks, but we have $3.4 million committed right. to building our boat docks. Yeah. And once we get the boat dock done, the next step in that logical process is once someone steps off the boat dock, what do they do next? 
Well, we want them to walk up to uh, the, the downtown area and we want that to be revitalized. So we're hoping that the idea of an increased level of recreational tourism will cause private business to then think that it will be a good idea to invest. And at some point we will reach a, a private business tipping point where all of the uh, all of the, the attention generates more attention and generates more attention. And then that will develop as well. Our also, also what we would like to do is find a way to cross pollinate between the historical tourism and the recreational tourism to get one group interested in the other aspect. And right. Right now, the two challenges we face, number one, is marketing. We need, to, we need to have an idea of who we are and why people want to come here. I'm originally from Northwest Arkansas, Southwest Missouri. So when you say the Ozarks or you say Branson, people know exactly what you're talking about. Right. And we need to be moving in that direction regionally. To, and I realize it's going to be difficult to try to put everything in one one phrase basket, but we need to come up with something on a, a regional level to get people interested in where they know with mental shorthand what's offered there and why they should go. And then we have lodging and parking issues primarily, but we need private investment, we need lodging, we need marketing, we need to be able to get people to come here because as I've said to others, if we can get them here once, they'll come back. We just need to get their attention and get them here that first time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You you hit on the right things. And, and we do have recommendations in there that would certainly apply here. Uh, Ripley was one of the communities I had in mind. When we talk about lodging, uh, we have some recommendations to uh, do some lodging uh, monitoring um, and uh, uh, and identify areas where there might be an opportunity for lodging development. Ripley would be one of those places I would see as, as having the opportunity for perhaps a uh, uh, more of a, uh, call it a boutique hotel, uh, something like a bed and breakfast, but larger. So maybe instead of four rooms, it might be a, a 10 or 20 room uh, type of hotel. And uh, if it tied into the waterfront, uh, because I'm aware of what you're doing there, that's another great opportunity. And um, it's something you see on the uh, the West Coast. Uh, I noted as I was driving down through Oregon, number of places where um, there's uh, uh, lodging uh, where there are marinas uh, so that people can get off the boat and, uh, and stay in a hotel for a night. Uh, I think you could do that. I think you do have the people who are driving through on the road. Um, I, I think there's there's a lot going, a lot of potential for Ripley. We hope so, and we we look forward to working with everyone on the call here to to move that ball forward. Yeah, and your example of the Ozarks, I think, is great. That's that's exactly what we'd like to see here. Michael, we've got another question in the chat from Phil Clyburn from the village of Greenfield. He asks, rails to trails from Mount Vernon, Virginia to Columbus, Ohio, going through Washington, D.C., Maryland, Pennsylvania, Athens, Ohio, Chillicothe, Greenfield, Washington Courthouse, and on to Columbus. In your opinion, how do you think that this development may affect our region? Um, does that pass through your region? Yes. That particular one? Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I, I haven't, it, I, I know I read something just a couple days ago about uh, there's an effort right now to do a, um, a, a trail system, mostly on rail trails, uh, spanning the continent. Um, but yes, uh, those, those kinds of trails have become enormously popular. And uh, I, I think the estimate um, on the, uh, the cross country rail trail was, uh, it would generate, so $300 million in spending. I'm, I might be way off on that. It, it was, it was a very significant amount of money and we see it even on smaller trails. Uh, the, the very first rail trail in the country, um, uh, was, was here in Wisconsin. It was the Elroy Sparta trail. And I, I talked to the person who 
was inadvertently responsible for it. Uh, a friend of mine has since passed away who uh, was the uh, state rail commissioner. And um, there's a, uh, a tremendous amount of business that's brought in by those, if they're long enough. And that I think is one of the challenges that you have right now is people will travel uh, well, a few hours even uh, to go to a site where they know they can get on their bike and they can do 50 miles. Uh, if, if you've got a eight mile rail trail, that's not the length that needs to be yet. And I know there is some, uh, some effort on extending some of the trails that you have. I think the, the Ohio River is another trail opportunity. If, even if that's um, you know, a significant amount of that in the right of way of, of the, uh, the highway, it's still uh, an opportunity for biking off, off of the uh, road. And, um, and there are other places too where, where those trails can be developed. And if you've got a network of them, especially because then you're giving people loop options and you'll find people who will put the, uh, the pack, the panniers on the back of their bike and do two 50 to 100 mile days uh, if they can get a loop in, get back to the car and you know they've had their great weekend of, of riding. So uh, yeah, the, the, the road biking or, or trail biking as opposed to mountain biking uh, is a huge opportunity for this region. Michael, I have a question for you about downtown revitalization. Can you expand on some of the strategies that you found could be helpful in particular to downtown revitalization, things our communities need? Mm -hmm. And also uh, because the governor's uh, new plan for Appalachia with you know the $500 million, um, you need to have a regional project to be really competitive. So can you also talk about maybe some of the unseen connections between yeah. our downtowns? Well, the regional is a, is a good point because we, we bring this up in the study. Uh, it used to be that you would find Main Street. Uh, if, if people are not familiar with it, Main Street is, is a national organization started in the 80s uh, to promote downtown revitalization. And they have a, um, a formula that was recently tweaked a little bit. It now emphasizes the economic side of things, which I think is the right move. Uh, initially, it was, okay, we want to do downtown revitalization. Let's pick out the brick pavers that we're going to use. Design design doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't have businesses. Uh, those are the businesses that are going to drive people to the community, and then you think about the design. Um, but, uh, but we're seeing examples where small communities that can't afford to have their own coordinator um, maybe there's a county level organization or even in some cases a regional organization where uh, there is a, uh, a full-time staff person who maybe is overseeing uh, four or five, six different communities and assisting them with their programs. Um, we uh, uh, have a number of recommendations in here related to business assistance that we think economic development folks can get involved in. Uh, whether it's marketing or business formation, entrepreneurship kinds of initiatives uh, related to tourism businesses. So it could be a, a restaurant, it could be a uh, shop of some sort, uh, as well as an attraction. And um, what I've seen is the communities that are most successful are the ones that have been most directly involved. Uh, so Trinidad, Colorado, uh, taking a, uh, a building in its downtown and um, acquiring it, you, partnering with uh, Art Source uh, or Art Space uh, International, which is an organization that uh, creates both artist uh, studios and living space. Um, other communities that have been the aggressor in uh, in acquiring a building, rehabbing it, and making it available to the right kind of tenant, uh, one that one's going to contribute. So instead of the um, you know, the office 
you know, maybe they're uh, because it's a nonprofit or because it's a, uh, in most cases, nonprofit, it's, it's easier to do because you can also get donations. Um, then uh, I could give you other examples of uh, communities that have created programs to start businesses. So uh, one that we worked with that wanted to create a bakery uh, or want to bring a break bakery into the, the downtown, what they did is, is they uh, sponsored a contest and the winner of the contest uh, would get um, uh, a combination of marketing and services uh, provided by the organization and the Small Business Development Center to help them get started. Um, and uh, then partnering with the, the owner of the building who said, well, I'll give them um, I think it was six months of free rent uh, to go into the space. He wanted to get somebody in there that was a quality tenant. And uh, there were a couple others that threw in things that bank uh, provided a uh, interest-free loan. And uh, they were able to put together a really attractive package. And uh, a couple of women um, who won that uh, created a, a cupcake place uh, that was so successful that it expanded. Uh, but what they're doing in addition to the bakery that they have is they took that second space and created an event space. So now if you're having a, a birthday party for your kids, uh, you can go there and um, the, uh, the kids will get a cupcake and they bring out the icing and the decorations and whatnot. And every kid gets to decorate their own cupcake. And uh, it, it's really kind of cute what they've done. Uh, but those, those are the ones that work um, the, the kinds of programs that focus solely on uh, infrastructure. Um, it's important to have your parking. It's important to have an attractive setting, uh, but you got to prioritize putting the businesses in there first. And that point uh, about tipping point, it's, it's really about critical mass. Any other questions? I know Phil Clyburn has commented, we're starting to work with Heritage Ohio and it's exactly what he's talking about. So yeah. it's great to know that everyone's hearing the same things and you know ready to work together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really uh, saw a lot of that, uh, particularly in some counties, um, the, the initiative. Uh, and I love that there's outreach going on across the river. Uh, we, we did address that in a number of places that, uh, and, and you see it in a couple of communities. I, uh, I think it was Maysville uh, that did it best, that uh, when I visited them and went to their tourist center and talked to the director down there and looked at the literature displays and thumbed through their magazines, they realized that there are assets on the north side of the river where somebody can come to Maysville, use it as their base and head off a half hour in, in any direction and, um, and go do something, see a site and then come back uh, to stay for the night and have dinner. And that kind of uh, approach really is, is what you need to, to adopt more in this region. Not get, get away from, well, we're only going to our county borders. And it's very understandable because the funding source is coming from the county. And, and so it's hard to make that leap to, well, we can talk about things that are outside the county. One of the things that I was hoping that we might be able to discuss at some point is the logistics of trying to get this stuff done. Because again, marketing is the problem. We don't have the dollars and we don't have the time. Right. And if we had someone who was churning social media, who was putting out apps uh, proactively so people could search things on their cell phones and know what the attractions were, that sort of thing, and even advertising, if we could come up with some sort of regional co-op where instead of Ripley spending $1,000 a year to say, hey, come to Ripley, if everybody contributed $1,000 a year, we would have $25,000 a year to advertise the entire region. We just need to 
get that system going. And I'm sure that we would all contribute as much as we could because getting the reward again, getting someone to come here, because going back to what we said, if somebody steps off the boat dock, we want to greet them with a kiosk that says, welcome to Ripley, go to Rankin House, go to Parker House, here are some other things. Oh, and by the way, uh, Georgetown's 15 minutes north with Civil War history, and Serpent Mound is over in Adams County, and the Grant Place is in Claremont County. There's no reason why we can't cross promote everyone with each other. Right. Yeah, and, and, and that is a point we made, and, and you're exactly right, it's a cost saving thing. Uh, we looked at, we said, maybe there are four regions here. And um, so instead of, you know, Brown County and Adams County, uh, each putting out their own brochure, or instead of um, Lawrence County, Galliot County, Vinton County, each putting out their brochure, maybe there's a regional brochure. And you don't need to spend as much money on printing well, then you've got money that's freed up to use for other things. And, um, and, and then also as much as you can take advantage of what you get for free. Uh, you need a staff person to do uh, the social media, but that could also be an intern. And uh, the, the activity specific apps, those uh, apps like all trails or fat tire um, that's, user submitted content. So great way to, if I don't know if any of your high schools have uh, a, a community service uh, type of uh, program. Uh, some of the schools that, that do have, you know, you have to do something for your community as a con, you know, component of your graduation. It's great to send them out with an app and say, go hike a trail and submit it. And uh, that way you start getting it populated. And I know I, I do it all the time. I, I did one uh, just a few days ago where um, I, I went out with all trails, started recording it at the end. It was a trail that wasn't in the system, but one that I came across and submitted it. It's going to take anywhere from three to six months, but it will show up there. Uh, and, and then that person who's going well, where am I going to go hiking this weekend? They pull up their app. They say, well, I want to look for a trail that's between five and 10 miles long and has these features along it. And it, the filter in it, it'll pop up. Right now, nothing is popping up. So uh, that's what we want to change. And great way to use college student, a, a you know, high school student, whatever it may be. Um, great, great project for a Boy Scout troop. Somebody's Eagle project can be to uh, get 25 uh, trails recorded in all trails and hiking project. <laughs> hey, before we move off of that, I just wanted to mention, you know, social media teams is a great strategy because social media is pretty much free and the algorithm actually works better if it's not paid, although paid is great. And to that point, a lot of the people on this call are county employees or city employees, and you already have a very diverse network through your team members on your county email systems. You know, those are the kinds of things. If you could put together a little team of promotion through your own coworkers, you know, that would help as well. So that's just an idea. Marcy Barlow is mentioning that in the comments too, that um, when she was in Pennsylvania, the County Economic Development Organization partnered with the Tourism Bureau to share in the cost of marketing. And that may be something that uh, would work well with several counties. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have uh, one last question uh, for you, Michael. Um, I just wanted to ask you, because you mentioned, you know, Ripley was in the top five destinations in the region. Can you talk just a little bit more about, you know, what maybe those other destinations were? And mm -hmm. also, was there anything particularly unique or surprising you found when studying trends and sites in our region? Uh, well, so that, that second question is one I'll maybe start with. What was unique is I found a lot of history I was not aware of, like the Underground Railroad, 
uh, like the Civil War, like the Iron Furnaces, all of which is not very well known. Um, another thing that I found very interesting, uh, you have this whole paranormal thing going on, I think would be a huge marketing opportunity, especially seasonally. Uh, so you have Moonville Tunnel, you have Mothman, you have all of these sites. There's, there's a website I came across that documents all these, the, the places that are allegedly haunted. And um, uh, then you have uh, the activities like the, um, was it Trees, Trees of Terror or something like that. There's, there's a couple different sites that do uh, haunted type event around Christmas. Um, again, I, I think it's a great opportunity, uh, a fall opportunity for you particularly. Uh, then, um, oh, the, the ag tourism uh, I mentioned, I'd love to see more emphasis on uh, ag and food culture. Um, so not, not just the agriculture, but then what do you do with that? So building events around it, Think of the, the big ones like uh, in uh, Holland, Michigan with its Tulip Festival. Um, you know, if, if you have areas and part, part of what we're doing in California, it's not simply ag tourism, but uh, ag diversification and uh, moving from simple commodity agriculture to let's, let's take the products that we're growing here and uh, use them to make something. Uh, so that we have a high value product to ship out of the area instead of just raw milk, we're making cheese. And uh, uh, that I think is, is part of what you can do in, in tying together the economic development and agricultural piece of it. Uh, so um, certainly if you're growing fruit or vegetables, other things, uh, you're seeing a higher return in farming than you would if you're simply growing, uh, you know, dent corn. Um, then uh, getting to the uh, the destination places, it really is about that critical mass of businesses and ones that are going to jump out uh, are Chillicothe, uh, like the Boney Fiddle District. I think uh, Gala Police uh, to an extent. Um, maybe not as, as much as it needs to be just yet, but it's, it's certainly got the potential. I'd have to include the outlet malls. Uh, it, it's a different kind, but it is also something that you do see people heading out uh, to drive out to the, the mall or if they're passing it, stopping. Uh, you have a few unique, uh, well, of course, the Amish Mennonite shops, and, and there are a couple areas where they're clustered. Uh, but they are scattered throughout the region too. And then um, uh, jungle gyms. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments or Jess or John, do you wanna wrap up or? I'd just like to say, um, We probably look um, smarter than we are here for having done this, having Place Dynamics come in and do this study. And I'm talking OVRDC. Uh, when we, uh, as Jessica said, I think the stimulus for this was that meeting up at Lake Hope Park in Benton County when the uh, we met with the governor's office of Appalachia and our regional partners um and also some of those over in athens megs east of here um, about tourism in ohio and that being a focus so when the eda cares act grant came um it was a recommendation of staff here let's do a tourism study and i said okay sounds like a good plan it's just interesting that uh this is wrapping up um the report jessica has in hand from place dynamics and has been reviewing it and uh, this project ends next Thursday, basically, the contract with Place Dynamics. And we certainly appreciate all the work they've done here in the region and uh, the coordination with our office, uh, with Jessica. And um, 
I just think it's a interesting time. That's what I mentioned the point about being smart. That probably about July first, maybe shortly thereafter, we are going to have a set of guidelines come from the state of Ohio about the opportunity to pursue five hundred million dollars for the thirty-two counties of Appalachia. And um, that money can be used for downtown revitalization. And I heard Michael say several times here, regional, 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 uh, you know, you can't stop at the borders. And that's the way this funding's uh, geared. I know that it involves trails, that trails are an eligible activity. Um, you know, one of the things, is a uh, workforce in that. Um, I know at one time uh, that was some of the early on discussions. I think, Michael, I remember when you sat down with us is uh, when you expand this industry, you got to have a workforce for it and having people knowledgeable, not just somebody you're operating a cash register, but knowledgeable to say, hey, since you're here, you might want to go down to um, two towns down and visit this, you know, that, that can promote the self promotion there again when you got people in your shop. But uh, and educating workers. So, nonetheless, I think we're. It's just interesting that we're going to have money available here um, next week, the week after, that people can pursue to plan. And I would hope that the document that Place Dynamics has put together for the OVRDC region will help guide and drive and justify the projects that you you all that might be out there planning on pursuing those funds. Can use our plan that to justify your application that says hey there's a plan that's been developed that plan identifies that the very thing we want to pursue is a need in the region and something that uh you know will merit uh consideration for funding so uh like again the timing on this couldn't have been more perfect and i take no credit for that um it was just <laughs> kind of uh it just happened to be honest I just want to chime in real quick and um, say, in addition to that 500 million, which is so exciting, and you know, we'd be totally remiss if we didn't talk a lot about that. Uh, but we'd also be remiss if we didn't mention, you know, some ongoing perennial opportunities and another special initiative that I saw that ARC is is doing at this time, ARC in Washington. So. Um, Tourism is a major investment area in ARC's new strategic plan. So those are smaller grants than uh, this new program from the state of Ohio will be, um, but still worth looking into. Uh, our pre-application period for that has passed, but it's still a good time. Anytime is a good time to start your planning. So if you have questions about ARC financing and tourism projects, please re reach out to me. And also um, in, uh, concert with the Conservancy Fund, ARC is doing an initiative right now for strategic planning uh, for regional tourism development, which we've done for our entire region. But if you have certain areas or counties that you would like to partner with and you're interested in a program like that and you want more information on it, uh, let Gina or I know and we can get that to you. So, um, you know, I can't thank you all enough for being a part of this and, and helping us out making this plan successful because without your work, you know, all of this good timing would be nothing. So thank you all. And um, we've come up on our time. We don't want to hold anyone up from lunch. So with, uh, with what Jessica said, I just want to thank all of you for participating this morning. Thank you for what you do in your communities. Um, we're a 12th county region. Uh, we have 10 staff. We can't do any hardly any small piece of what gets done in this region it, but we can be a part of that and help and we want to be but uh kudos to all, to all of you who uh, do make those things happen in the tourism business and other things in your in your community um i want to thank thank uh, michael and uh place dynamics um for the work they've done over the last uh, i think it's been 18 or 19 months and okay. putting this uh, plan together i think we got the uh, right consultant for this work. I, I like the, their perspective from, I've often said this many years, I think we take for granted 
the assets we have and we don't realize they're there. So having, a, I think having a group coming from outside our region to come in and look and say, you guys have something here. I, I think that was key. And, um, but I think they've done a great job. So Michael, thank you so much um, for the work you put in and the information. And um, I've not looked at the report yet. I do plan to. And uh, I hope that uh, this leads to uh, bigger and better things, not just for the region in tourism, but a role for us as a regional entity to support some of these things that uh, have been presented, uh, certainly not to take over, but to be a uh, catalyst and a, a facilitator for some of the things that have been brought up. So with that, I appreciate everyone taking the last uh, hour and a half or so to uh, be part of this and uh, enjoy your lunch today uh, and have a great weekend. And thank you all for participating. Thank Thanks you. everyone.